Thank you for listening to Scandinavian Crimes Podcast. Be sure to check out the episode links and be part of our other social media platforms where you can leave a topic suggestion or even share some of your insights regarding the subject matter of the episode. We will always do our best to provide a well-researched episode, but sometimes due to limited access to information and translation issues, some information can be lost. It is therefore good to do your own research and get a deeper understanding of a case of your own interest. So with that all said, let us start today's episode. So welcome to Scandinavian Crimes. My name is Devante and say hello to my lovely co-host, Delilah. Hi. And on this podcast, we will cover famous Scandinavian criminals who made their mark throughout Scandinavian history. So today we will tell the story of Matthias Flink. He was a Swedish army officer who made headlines in 1994 for carrying out one of the deadliest mass shootings in the country's history. His actions shocked Sweden and sparked a national debate about guns, laws, and mental health, as well as the role of the military in preventing violence. So grab your snacks, kind of relax, chill, and let's vibe out together as we go through this story of Matthias Flink and the mass shootings of Fallon. Flink was born on March 1970 and was raised in Fallon, Sweden. Flink's parents divorced when he was nine years old and he chose to stay with his father while his mother moved out to live nearby. According to psychological evaluations, Flink was deeply affected by his mother's departure and developed an alienation towards women. In 1993, after completing high school, Flink enlisted as a conscript to the Dalarna Regiment in the Swedish Army. He was determined to become an officer and later actually got employed at the Delano Regiment. Despite showing potential as a soldier, Flink struggled with alcohol abuse, which would eventually lead to his downfall. He had applied for a license to own firearms, but was denied due to his excessive drinking and aggressive behavior. Despite this, he was eventually able to gain access to weapons through his military service. On June 11th, 1994, Flink went on a shooting rampage that left seven people dead. He consumed a large amount of alcohol before going home to change into his field uniform. He then went to his regiment where he stole an AK-5 assault rifle and 150 rounds of ammunition. In order to dodge the security guards, he had to climb over the wall in the area that was not frequently guarded. Then Flink set out to the city park where he encountered a group of women who were on their way to the regiment after finishing some festivities in town. He opened fire on what ended up being members of the women's auxiliary services, killing four of them instantly. One died later in the hospital and one who was severely wounded survived. He then walked across the road not too far from the park where he shot and killed two men, a cyclist and a security officer who was in his car. After the shooting, Flint climbed up the construction crane where he remained there for over half an hour before finally climbing down and walking home along the railway track. It was here that two police officers spotted him walking on the track. When they shouted at him to stop and drop his weapons, Flint raised his hands to shoot, to which the officers responded by firing at him. They ended up hitting Flink in the hip where he fell immediately and was arrested on the spot. At the same moment Flink was hit, a burst of fire was discharged from his weapon and two shots hit the police car. The officers had taken cover behind the engine block of the car and luckily were not hit. Flink was disarmed and several police patrols had been surveilling the area and heard the sequence of events over the radio and responded. An ambulance was called and Flink was taken to the hospital where it was found that he had an alcohol level of 1.69. During the trial, Flink admitted to committing the murders but claimed that he had no recollection of the events due to his high level of intoxication. He stated that he had been drinking heavily the night before the shooting and had only slept for a few hours before he started drinking again in the morning. He had very fragmented and unclear memories of the whole event and the last thing he remembered was a Volvo police car and the pain when he got shot. The prosecutor argued that Flink was not drunk enough to be unable to remember his actions and that he had planned the murders. The prosecutors were able to prove that he stole the weapon and linked him to the murder through a combination of witness testimony and forensic evidence. Flink also ended up admitting to stealing the rifle during his trial, stating that he had taken it without permission and that it was a 
quote, stupid thing to do. The defense argued that Flink was suffering from a mental disorder and was not, and was not criminally responsible for his actions. They presented evidence to Flink that he had a history of mental illness and had been diagnosed with a personality disorder. As part of the investigation, Flink underwent a psychiatric evaluation to determine his mental state at the time of the murders. The evaluation revealed that he suffered from a severe mental personality, but did not have any mental illnesses or disorders that would excuse his actions. One could say that Flink's mental health suffered severely during the spring of 1994 and progressively worsened until the murders. This resulted in very aggressive behavior, jealousy, sleeping disorders, and paranoia leading to his mental breakdown. The reason for the trigger for his mental breakdown, however, is very much unknown. The court trial ended up being a question of whether or not Flink was mentally ill at the time of the shooting. Flink was in a self-inflicted temporary psychotic condition triggered by alcohol on the evening of the crime. If the court deemed Flink was indeed mentally ill, then he wouldn't be able to be sentenced to prison. The trial lasted for several months and both the prosecutor and defense called numerous witnesses and medical experts to testify. In the end, the court found Flint guilty of all seven counts of murder and sentenced him to life in prison. The court rejected the defense's argument that Flink was not criminally responsible for his actions, stating that although he may have had a mental disorder, he was still able to understand the nature and consequences of his actions. During Flink's years in prison, he had been described as a calm and well-behaved prisoner. He applied for parole in 2008 to the District Court of Orobro. After a thorough psychiatric examination by Swedish National Board of Forensic Medicine, Flink was given several monitor short-term leaves from prison, and in May 2007, he was granted unmonitored leaves due to good behavior. The victim's family strongly opposed Flink's parole and expressed worries that another reoccurrence of his crimes could occur. In January 2008, Flink requested that his life sentence be limited to 24 years of imprisonment. However, on September 3rd, Orobro Municipal Court rejected the request stating that a set time punishment has to greatly exceed 24. After this, the imprisonment time got adjusted and changed several times. He appealed multiple times and the imprisonment time ended up being 30 years ruled by the Supreme Court, making his parole date to the summer of 2014 after serving 20 years in prison. On June 11, 2014, Flink was released from jail, which was the 20th anniversary of his shooting spree. The shooting in Fallon was one of the deadliest mass shootings in Swedish history and sparked widespread shock and grief in the country. It also led to a review of the Swedish military's weapons policy and increased security for use of military weapons. So, uh, this story was kind of wicked, but, you know, unfortunately, being an American... I can't say like this specific details are common, but you already know what I'm going to say. Mass shootings is very common over here, unfortunately. And this only sounds familiar. This sounds like last week for someone like me, someone who was, you know, coked up on their own rhetoric, had their own personal beliefs. And they was like, hey, I have access to a gun. Let me shoot it up. And them having mental disorders. And so they, honestly, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm whatever you say. You know, I'm going to respond to it, but this is, I hate to say it, I'm, I'm a little numb to it just because this is so normal for me in mass shootings and it's sad, but this is, this sounds like a typical white nationalist kind of ideology, incel and ideology. Oh. So I'm, I'm just going to let you kind of take the lead. Um, well, I could say this. I, I want to talk about the mental health part because... As y'all already know, one's mental health is very important when you do all of these things. Um, and in this particular case, it seemed like he was grow going through something and that just l basically led to what he ended up doing. Is it right? No. But... I don't think one should disqualify that, you know, one's he mental health is important uh, and how this is a really huge factor to, like, when a person reaches their limits, they can end up doing things that is something they will regret for the rest of their lives. And in this case, his friends started noticing that he progressively got worse and more abusive and more addicted to alcohol and stuff during the spring 
like I, he probably had some issues before too but that it just worsened so much the same year uh but nobody kind of knew what was going on or what he like went through and maybe if he got treated in time you know m this wouldn't have really happened back then i don't really know how it was with like mental health and the stigma and su such if there were any stigmas about it um because like usually there's like back in the days there used to be stigma but i don't know like in 1994 maybe i, I i'm not pr really sure how it was back then but like if he got the help he needed obviously he would have ended up doing this um you want to say something I, sorry i just wanted to i just wanted to interrupt you really quickly something i just uh, just popped in okay. my head <laughs> um you're because you're on a topic of mental health and i agree mental health is important but in his case um i think and this is just an assumption so do not take this as a fact do not take this as factual or as you know this is my personal opinion what i'm about to say right now i think the rhetoric or this that hate and disdain he had for women uh i think that might have stemmed from his dad i think so too and i say that because if we are to believe the information that you know they found out in the court when they kind of did a psychiatric evaluation and felt like his emotions were building based on the timeline it seemed like immediately once he moved in with his dad this behavior seemed to have like spiraled you know and then he kind of had spiraled. that until yeah like until he until he got mm -hmm. older so i think his dad whatever reason why they didn't work out and they separated it seems like his dad was feeding him information like oh you're you know your mom is this you know women just blah 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 and then was fueling him and then imagine being a nine-year-old kid just getting hearing yeah. that over and over and over again much like anything in life you hear something frequently enough the chances of you believing it especially from hearing it from childhood is substantially higher so i'm not denying he, like, I, like i i agree with you that you know yeah all of these things and also the mental health part is part of how and why he ended up doing it and mm -hmm. i just wanted to say something more um to the audience as well but also to you that when i was researching about this case um there was like some sources that said that you know the night before when he was drinking he was at a club and he had a fight with his ex-girlfriend why this is important is as you mentioned before it's related to his like you mm -hmm. know hatred and jealousy and all that stuff um it also his drinking problem worse than everything uh, to the point where he got very abusive towards his ex-girlfriend and uh this people the sources basically say that um this fight kind of triggered this shooting spree but because like the reason i like i didn't want to put it in the story it was because there's like a lack of information regarding the incident and if it actually really happened so mm -hmm. uh, like this is something that you know uh it's not take with a grain of yeah, salt yeah so because i didn't want to put something that is you know faulty in any way so i just wanted to mention that this might have happened and it might have triggered the shooting and as you stated before it could be based from his uh, view of women and uh, she even the ex-girlfriend uh, did a police report due to his aggressive behavior towards her and then he mm -hmm. just went home changed his outfit and went to work basically he had a, like a little bit of sleep too but like that's basically what yeah. the sources says um and so I think it supports the theory then yeah it kind of does like I think yeah, everything yeah. is a cluster of everything <laughs> like it's not only mental health so i even I, I know personality disorders are like far more complex mm. than simply just environment uh there are some genetic components that make some people more predisposed to it especially if you come from a very toxic household or abusive household as a kid uh, that can cause your brain to develop in a certain way. I can get into a whole spiral mm. about that. 
but yeah, it seems like the catalyst was like, remember, this is this section as well. Take this with a grain of salt. Since, you know, Delilah said this is not like something we know for a fact. Mm. This is just some take it as a rumor, this part. So you can do what you want with this information, but do not include it in the factual statements we made in, in the, the stories. Previous, yeah. But uh, it seems like the ex-girlfriend fight would make sense because it's a catalyst. Because if he, let's say, you know, he's already had this rhetoric in his head, but if we believe the story, he's dating, mm-hmm. which means, yeah, he doesn't like women. Yeah, he has his preconceived notions, blah, blah, blah. But then he's still getting something out of the relationship to some level, which would keep him docile. That typically happens in a lot of relationships, even abusive relationships, when they're still receiving what they want. There's still some level of, you know, chill. Mm. But then the second they feel like they're not in control, that's usually when that part of themselves kind of come out. And because whatever happened, we don't know. Like I said, these are just rumors because we don't know what happened. Like it, uh, it pre- seems like, like su- what supposedly happened was that she was out in the club and he got jealous because she was like with the friends and it was like both males and females or she might have flirted. Like maybe they weren't really a huge thing back then. Like, I don't know. It was unclear if mm-hmm. they were like, it seemed like they were together, but like they broke up and then he wanted to continue being together with her but she didn't didn't. and like there was like a it was like unclear really what truly happened but presumably he was jealous because she was with somebody else yeah so basically he lost control of the situation that ignited what was already buried under the soil the catalyst and that's what launched you know his rampage and like i said that's not a fact I'm just saying, you know, if I'm following, if I believe, if I were to believe the rumor, it would make sense. The pieces fit. The way, like, based on him and and everything we talked about in the story, you know. Yeah, so, uh, the only thing I say, uh, well, obviously, I'm pretty sure you got more to say, but I'm (laughs) going to say this for all the gentlemen out there. This is coming from a man. Gentlemen, it ain't that deep. It's really not that deep, bro. Just, you know, if, if anything... If anything, if you really like, I'm just going to put this in perspective for you. If you're not going to respect women, that's your business. I don't, I, I look, that's your business, but it ain't that deep to do all that because you're upset. Yeah. Like there's the members there's, on to there's the more next. women than men in the yeah. world. Yeah. There's, um, there's more women in the world than men. But just like fix on, yourself bro. first. Like if just, you are like flink, then obviously that's not a good behavior but yes, get yourself together <laughs> fix that a little I'm bit like, but and then you know try and find somebody new i'm like it's gonna get you nowhere it gets you nowhere in life just move on get yourself together you know and don't yourself. believe the hype on the internet you know there there are women out there who don't date you for money there are women out there who don't date you because you're not tall enough just like there are it goes both ways the internet is you know obviously back then there wasn't you know the internet wasn't a big thing But uh, in his case, but either way, don't believe always what people tell you. Don't believe the Internet. Just move on. Get yourself together and just live your life. And then the best relationships are the ones you accidentally run into and never the ones you're looking for. That's it. It's really simple. So you can go ahead, Delilah. That's all I that's all I have to say about that. Okay. (laughs) Um, Well, Honestly, there's like not a lot of, you know, it's very obvious what happened. Um, And the reason I said that, you know, if you take away the components that would trigger his mental health, which was alcohol and all the scenarios and the ex-girl, maybe the ex-girlfriend thing. Like if you take away those things, because when he was in prison, he seemed to be like a quiet, calm person, I guess. So if you take away Mm -hmm. the triggers... I think he could work on himself and like, you know, not be in that situation again, if that makes sense. Yeah. Which I think like you can see that he had like if he gets multiple uh like what was it? He had a before he got out, uh they were kind of fighting a lot though with the process of, you know, getting him out uh, eventually. But uh, he had a lot of like you know good behavior and like if he wasn't mo- like monitored too much either like those are signs that he 
like they trust him to a, some degree but you know i think that by t- like treating your mental health issues and also minimizing the triggers of it i think he could you know be work like be a decent guy if he would just work on himself i agree i i just hope that they when he was in prison that they actually took the time to uh give him therapy sessions because it's easy to be a decent person when you remove the thing that triggers that person and then when the trigger comes you know, if back you're in again an all-male prison you know yeah if you're in an all-male prison obviously there's no women there and then I, I say this, men are far less tolerant of disrespect oh, yeah. than I give women kudos. I'm like, I tolerate a lot more because <laughs> men, you, you'll get punched. Like, we don't, that's why I we think like in to, America, for the most that's part. most probably like that. I don't think it's going to name a country. So maybe they'd be like, hey, I would protect myself from bullshit. But I don't think, like, I, I don't think, like, the initial thing is to fight here in Sweden at least. I mean, it depends on the well, person. So, so, but, like, I think in America, it's so more I guess prevalent. I'll say, <laughs> yeah, I say over here in America, at least, like, if you're, and this applies even to, uh, even if, like, women you're dating, I'm like, a lot of the times, like, we're not confrontational with each other. Because over here, if you're going to disrespect someone, you know, there's an expectation, someone, we're going we're gonna to punch you. <laughs> there's no like there's we don't know so it's easy to be you know a respectable guy in a male prison because even though that's how we are in a in america still there's just a general rule with most men we understand if we're engaging another man that's there's a chance he might be our physical equal like it's so he of course he he could be nice He's in prison with dudes who are probably still stronger than him. Like, he, imagine yeah. trying that with a man who's like strong, <laughs> just as strong or stronger than you, and then it's it's so much more difficult. I think there probably it's is more like petrifying. rules in there and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we have we have a relative mutual respect because honestly, no, none of us really wants to fight, but we know it's a possibility. I just that, never thought about <laughs> you know, that. You know, fun. like obviously, even though they might be nice and kind in prison, because I never thought about like the whole society kind of thing in the prison like there's like a different kind of rules and stuff there yeah, yeah I didn't think about different that different set of rules yeah. yeah you go in jail I'm like you got you better be a good boy cause guess what there's people in there who will definitely kill you so of course it's easy to be nice I just hope that they he went to therapy so that way when he comes out well when he already came out but you know that well we haven't heard about anything public, from him so I guess he's doing okay hopefully you know it stays that yeah. way you know but I just hope that he dealt with it in a way that he understands like this part of me was there because of some trauma and potentially probably even though that's not a fact his dad Mm. and you know I just hope that's the case you know I don't want him to still have those demons locked away in his closet ready to burst out whenever he feels some sort of inconvenience from a woman because uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, talk about an update regarding him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, to the victim's family, uh, I just, you know, it's hard to hear that. You know, I can, I get what they're going through, and I hope that they will find, you know, closure in a way. And I hope they have been able to move on because it's never easy to hear when the murders of their loved ones is free basically um yeah so that's tough to them as well uh i hope you have moved on and doing well i agree that's really tough Mm -hmm. you know that's why this whole prison thing is a debate you know it works it works but you know but still can you can you you imagine being the victim's family like he's free but i can never see you know, my sister, my daughter, my whoever, again. Yeah. So it, it really sucks. But uh, let us know what you think about this episode. Uh, I think, like, I, I, was, I said it before and I'll say it again. Fellas, it ain't that deep. It ain't worth it. Mm. Let it go. Let it go. It's really not that deep. Sorry. I'm so <laughs> done. Um, it's not that deep. Let it go. <laughs> Chillax, you know, someone, you know, hey, you can be in a relationship and she can upset you 
things may not work out it's okay to feel upset get it out your system do what you got to do get yourself together move on move on you you will i know he i don't know what you're dealing with in your mind right now this is this is a nice virtual way of me trying to give you some helpful advice from someone who has experienced some intense motions in my life this is my last few months of being 29 because i'm entering my 30s but sorry I'm, I'm i'm telling you this as someone with a little bit experience you know you know, yes, the pain may hurt and sometimes your mind can go into places that, you know, especially being a guy, the easiest emotion for us is anger. And that's testosterone's fault. But reach out go. also if you need help. Take a deep breath. Talk. Talk to your friends. Yes. You know, your close friends, people understand. Go to therapy. Get some help. It's okay to get those emotions out of it's your okay system. To get help. And learn how to process and just let go. Mm. Cause it ain't gonna do nothing for you in the long term, being that angry at you know half the human race just because of something that happened to you when you were 25 or younger 20 or, whatever, or 17 yeah. because of dating it's it's not it's not worth it it's not worth the headache and uh the only person who's going to really be suffering from it is who you, you. so um yeah that's what i'm going to say uh keep your hands to yourself uh you know treat each other with love respect you know the world is already a very horrible, violent place. You know, we should treat each other with love, respect. Let's just vibe, you know, let's strive for that utopia we all want uh, for the world. And, you know, just let's really just vibe it out together Goodbye. as a collective. Let's try and understand each other more be a little bit more empathetic. You know, even I can work on it a little bit more, you know, so we all can work on it as a group. And, you know, just let's just vibe, you know, it's just it's, it's too much going on already. Let's just vibe. Just I'm really going into a rabbit hole with this one. <laughs> just it, truly, we, we can be better to each other. We can be more understanding to each, uh, to each other. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Yes, I got a little bit more zen, more deep and more in the vibes and feels today mm. but you know hey maybe so okay. maybe someone out there needed to hear this yeah. you know i felt like the universe is telling me to say mm -hmm. this you know you know maybe someone needed to hear this on this podcast you know like dang this really might hit you know i've been there before i you know obviously you know 20s teenage years woo, was rough emotionally mm. <laughs> so just you know it's okay it's okay just i'm giving you a hug right now Virtual you, hugs. i hope you Yay. feel I hope you feel the energy that I'm sending your way. And uh, to end it on a good note, uh, let's see. Donuts. Uh, let's make some garlic buttered corn. What? That was, I okay. Well, now I feel unhealthy. I changed my mind. I want a salad. Kale salad. Oh, I, I said corn. Corn is a starch. It's not really that healthy. I mean, it's healthier than donuts. Depends what kind of donuts. Could it be an all wheat donut. What is there? An, is there one? Like wait, you what? Have wheat donuts with like sugar coating on it. That defeats the purpose. I don't of know. Them. I don't, first of all, who gets a wheat donut? <laughs> if, if whoever gets a wheat donut is clearly a serial killer. So uh. Okay. Either way, I changed my mind to kale salad. So. Uh, gross. With like a bunch of stuff, tomatoes, cucumbers. Gross. Just, just get something that's you know good for the soul feel good and uh well hey if you're gonna stick with kale fine that's, that's okay whatever. fine I'm mac and cheese okay corn. <laughs> i want Ooh. all of that though anyways honestly. sorry <laughs> <laughs> i hope you enjoyed the podcast i hope you received the message that i sent and uh oh yes like i said uh technically when this podcast comes out uh it'll be june so this oh, will be the true. last month for the podcast you know you gotta <laughs> enjoy the vibes now uh i think the last episode is probably not going to be the case we're going to review the previous season you know <laughs> uh break it down talk about it what we've learned what we can do better uh not just as a podcast but also as people mm -hmm. regarding these cases what we've learned in regards to these cases and uh, we'll prepare for season two, which will be released in September. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitch, uh, all of our social media platforms. We're trying to figure out ways to integrate it. So that way, you know, it's a lot easier to update all those platforms at once, you know, but we'll have that figured out by then probably. And uh, let us know if you want to discord too. you know, we can definitely, you know, 
talk to all of you, but I don't know about I think that one we yet. Have I'm Discord, just saying, though. let us know. We do have a Discord server. Yeah, we do. So <laughs> let us know. And, uh, you know, we just haven't made it public yet, but uh, we can have a space where we can communicate and talk and really just, you know, just create this nice little community Yay. of private investigators who go around looking at cases and Theory you know, we talks. piece this information together. Yes. So uh, be sure to do all that. All the links are in, you know, the description of the podcast mm-hmm. and the podcast page for whatever platform you're listening to. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a good morning, afternoon or evening. And uh, we shall talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Peace out.